before talking about this vintage, uh, let tell you a few words about uh, the vineyards and the family. So my best quality is to be the son-in-law of Henri Martin. I have the chance to uh, marry his unique daughter. Uh, and uh, I start to work with him uh, in 74. So it's my 48 uh, crop in harvest. So Henri Martin is, uh, most of you as uh, meet him in, in the past, uh, is uh, a unique uh, man in Bordeaux. Uh, his family is in Saint-Julien for more than three centuries. Um, they have all been, always been, of course, in the wine uh, activity. Uh, not as chateau owners, but sometimes as single flower, maître de chez, what we say, uh, homme d'affaires, which means uh, managing, uh, general manager, etc. Henri Martin, father, uh, was mainly a barrel maker. Uh, but as all the small people like this with the business, they also own a piece of uh, vine. The butcher has a piece of vine, the baker has a piece of vine, and the barrel maker has a piece of vine. And Henri Martin start working with his father in the early uh, 90s. But it was not very interesting by barrel making. So after the First World War, he stopped barrel making, and he decided to develop the vineyard. He start with something like 10 uh, acres, a little piece. But uh, as he was a, a barrel maker, he supplied most of the chateau here. And he has good connection with the owners. And as the business of the wine was not great at this time, and as the vineyards sometimes were divided in different lot plots, uh, Henri Martin go to different chateau owners say, well, this small piece is far from your main vineyard. It's not interesting for you. It costs you money. Uh, so if you want, I, 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 I help you to get rid of it and I buy it. OK, he said, well, OK. So piece by piece like that, he has bought about uh, 100 acres. And mainly from classified growth. So when people say Gloria is not classified, I said you are wrong. <laughs> and Gloria is 12 or 10 times classified, several times second, several times third, several times fourth, because we buy from all these chateaus. So um, when he has bought all these parcels, the second job, which was also very difficult, was to gather them the pieces, because it was like basil. So the piece bought from Du Cru Boncaillou, he changed it against Gru la Rose with another piece. So this work, uh, we finish it with Jean-Eugène Bory from Du Cru Boncaillou, who was a close friend. And the last exchange we did was in uh, 1982. OK? That's the story for Gloria. Uh, but nowadays, it could be impossible to do that, you know. Uh, well. So, second uh, episode later. <laughs> We're going to talk after that about the story of Saint-Pierre. Uh, I have to concentrate a lot because the story is very, very, very complicated. <laughs> okay, so 2020, uh, if you have tasted, you can empty your glass in the basket. Uh, <clears throat> is uh, we have a series of very small uh, crops. Uh, we have different reasons for that, dryness or uh, sometimes mildew. Uh, the only thing you have to know and to remember, if someone says, 
this crop was not big because there was some mildew. Mildew does not affect the quality of the wine. Mildew just aff affect the volume of the crop. It's not like botrytis. Botrytis affect the quality. But mildew, the, the, the seeds dry and fall. That's it. So you have less uh, volume in the vat. So we have the problem uh, <laughs> for about four or five years now. As you know, uh, if you are organic uh, winemaker, it costs you uh, the risk to have more mildew than with traditional <coughs> products. So 2020, as a good color, uh, it's very young, of course. Uh, there is a, a point that you have to know. In the past, the grapes were not sometimes peak uh, absolutely ripe. So the wine needs to age a minimum to be round, less tannin, less aggressive. Now, as we pick the grapes very ripe at their optimic, uh, the wine is pleasant young. And people say, well, if it is good young, it's not going to age. And it's crazy. Uh, because if you consider the uh, tannin control and the polyphenol content, it's huge in this wine. But as it is ripe, it is not as aggressive as it was 25 or 30 years ago. So people think that the young wine to age has to be aggressive. And it's strong. Now, we, you can enjoy the wine young, and you can also keep the wine for aging. And after that, it depends on the taste. It's like you, la ladies. Huh? Someone prefer young men, other one prefer mature men. So <laughs> <laughs> for the wine, it's the same thing. OK? But you can enjoy it nowadays. So we are going to taste now. <coughs> 20 Saint Pierre. Uh, I have a cellar master say when you, the wine is new from the vat right now during the fermentation, if the, 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 the color is great mm -hmm. and if the smell is good, pleasant, you are sure that the vintage is going to be good. 20 Saint Pierre. What about the ones that are very tannic and people say, oh, that's going to be great for a few years? I'm not so sure. But not so sure, you know. Um, uh, it's easier, but not better. Uh, it's like uh, like us. If we are not good young, sometimes people are evolutive maturing and change a little their mind. So if they are exciting young, they can be more quiet, aging, so they can improve. But. In general, In general, you I never change. Because <laughs> you think of the great years, like 82, mm. 09, mm. they were good young. Yeah. And you sure, sure. Okay. So, uh, now a little about Saint Pierre. Saint Pierre uh, is a fourth growth. Uh, if we consider uh, the wine, uh, the vineyard of Gloria is mainly on the, uh, uh, the south of the Appellation, and Saint Pierre is a little bit north of the Appellation. So, uh, which means that Gloria is a little, it's nothing to do, but to explain to you the difference in the, if, even if the difference is small, it is sensitive. Uh, Gloria is maybe a little in the Margot style, and Saint Pierre a little bit in the Pauillac style. You know, well, the difference. And uh, well, we used to say that uh, Gloria has a feminine style, and Saint Pierre is more virile, with more concentration, more tan. Uh, I have not told you uh, about the the, the blend. Uh, Gloria is 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Merlot, uh, about 
uh, how much is it? 5% uh, uh, Cabernet Franc and 5% Petit Verdot. Okay. Uh, Saint Pierre is uh, mainly uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 75%, 10, 15% Merlot, a little bit Cabernet uh, Franc and a little bit Petit Verdot. But it's more Cabernet Sauvignon. So you can realize it in the, in the, in the, in the, during the tasting. So Saint Pierre. Uh, Saint Pierre is uh, one of the uh, oldest estate in Medoc. The house here, you can see it from the window, is uh, the oldest part is from the 15th century. Uh, it was a small house. And when the success of the wine improved, the size of the house also. <laughs> uh, it, was, it, is, it is a false grass. But it had a, a, a very classic story in Bordeaux. Wedding, inheritance. The, the chateau was split in two pieces. Uh, then in three pieces, the vineyard 50% of the vineyard in two different ends, and the chateau is stayed, the house itself stayed in the family from Baron de Saint-Pierre. Uh, when I come here, uh, one guy uh, resembled almost all Saint-Pierre, and other pieces has been sold like this. And some of these pieces has been bought by Henri Martin, when I explain you that he, he bought parcels from parcel, he has bought in this time some parcels of Chateau Saint-Pierre that are now included in Gloria. And they stay in Gloria to maintain the style. Okay? So, the house was, uh, two ladies were living in, in the house. They, they were not married, they have no child. And uh, they have a quality. They were my cousin. So, when they get old, I say to this lady, the house was in poor condition. If you want, we buy the house, we will restore the house, and you stay in the house as long as you want. And she said, no, you're very kind, but uh, I have a, 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 a niece, a, a girl, she loved the house, so I keep the house for her. So, well, okay. And I, they were very old, they died. And the niece knew that I was interested by house. As soon as the, the, the aunt died, she called me and said, you still want to buy the house? <laughs> Say yes, so you can buy it. Good. So we buy the house because it was just in front of our cellar. And uh, we need to increase the size of the cellar. So I buy the house. Uh, I have to tell you <coughs> that in 1921, Henri Martin father, as a cooper, needs room to store the barrels before delivery. And in 1921, the people who own 50% of Saint Pierre <laughs> sell the 50%. And Henri Martin fathers buy the 50% of Chateau Saint Pierre. And he has produced under his name Chateau Saint Pierre 1921. But he has not kept the vineyard. He has sold the vineyard the year after. He was not uh, interested in the vineyard. He sell the vineyard and the brand to, uh, to, to the guy who was owning the other 50%. He just keep the sellers. And the cellars are these cellars that Henri Martin used for uh, Chateau Gloria. And as the cellar was a little too big, he sell 50% of the cellar to Chateau du Glana. Okay? So when I came here in 1973, I said, well, I would like to buy the house from my cousin and I would like to buy the 50% of the sellers from Chateau du Glana. So my cousin has the good idea to die. 
and uh, Denise, <laughs> Denise were not interested by the house, so I buy the house. Okay. And a few years after that, uh, the Chateau du Glana, who was divided between brothers who were not really close brothers, the guy who received a part received the cellar and received 10 hectares of vine. We split the 10 hectares with Brunner, du cru, we buy it, and I rebuy the cellar. And the cellar is the cellar next to our cellar. It's the, 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 the place where we build our new office where you enter the, 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 the estate. So in 50 years, we have bought the pieces missing because the main piece after we bought the house in 81, in 1982, the family from Belgium who own Chateau Saint-Pierre for inheritance problem was obliged to sell it. And we said, well, we have the house, we have the cellar, now we have to buy the brand and the vineyard. And we bought it in 1982. So in many time, you know, from 1921 to 19... Uh, uh, 2010, or 10, two, yeah, we rebought everything, okay? You're sure to remember it? Because uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you some question <laughs> to check. <laughs> okay, so as you see, it's a, it's a very uh, complicated story, but quite uh, common in, in, in Bordeaux, because uh, for wedding, as I said, inheritance, Chateau has been divided, rebought, mixed, etc. So now we are going to taste the 2019. Uh, it's a, it's a, a very interesting vintage. I don't know if you buy future uh, wine, but if you have bought 2019, we have been you have been very wise people, because as it was the first uh, vintage. After the uh, crisis, uh, the uh, COVID crisis, uh, as the business was so slow, this price has been ridiculous and very low. So it, it's a good bargain. <laughs> OK, let's go. So I don't know if you have it at home, but one of the uh, best last discovery is the stop good you know i am unable to pour wine now without this you know it, it leaks on the label it's awful uh, now it's very very convenient so 2019 will be a very very interesting and surprising vintage in the future good concentration big fruit uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, you, you have to remember that <laughs> we are not so, so pleased to, uh, to produce uh, wine w which are 14% the alcohol. But it is like for us, if the, 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 the jacket is very big and you very small, you are not going to look stronger for that. Hmm? You have to have the, the right jacket for your strengths. The problem when you have alcohol like this, 14 degrees, uh, all the elements are at the same level. So you don't taste alcohol, except if you drink two bottles. But uh, you, you don't feel the alcohol, because the, 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 the wine is very, very well balanced. So. Don't be, people sometimes are upset about uh, alcohol as they are upset by suffer. I talk sometimes with, is, is there any doctor's medicine here? No, nobody? Yeah. yeah, you? Okay. So one of my friends is doctor. He say, well, I don't know which percentage of the body is made of suffer. A, a huge volume of suffer in the, in the body of the people. So a little bit of suffer in, in, the, in the wine, is nothing. Uh, but people are upset by 
you know, it's fashionable to talk about people want to make natural wine with nothing. We did it in the past, you know, uh, and we were shipping in this time um, wine in barrel to England. And uh, the people were receiving the barrel in November when the weather was cold. And when it was coming spring, they were not drinking wine, they were drinking vinegar. And they were expecting, anxious, the new crop to have uh, a good wine. So natural wine cannot exist. Or if it exists, it exists for a short period. You cannot keep the wine for aging. So suffer is not a problem. We have a lot of suffer in our body, natural suffer. It's not a... And we are, are, we are uh, better and better in fermentation, uh, aging, etc. We'll reduce every year the, the quantity of sulfur that we put to stabilize the wine. Okay? The only thing we cannot check, it's uh, an opportunity to say it today, it's water. For the first time in 50 years, I pray for water during the crop, you know. But there was not a drop of water here for about now three weeks, and nothing during summertime. And it was crazy because it was raining in Bordeaux, it was raining on the seashore, it was raining in the uh, Cognac rear and the Charente, and here nothing. So. The, the crop is going to be ridiculous in volume. Great in quality, because the fruit is perfectly ripe, but the volume is very, very small. So, people like to compare vintages. How he looked like. <laughs> I said he looked like a good vintage. <laughs> uh, but. It's impossible to compare people, you know, uh, compare. Uh, uh, it's good. How good it is, probably very good, but compared to another vintage, it's very difficult. Each one has his own personality. And the same thing to say, well, how is it aging? I don't know. Probably well, because all the components are good, but who could say that, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I see we have many um, high temps in the press in France on uh, Phelps, uh, the, the American swimmer, who win, I don't forget how many gold medals. Well, when he was six months old, nobody could say that he's going to win so many uh, medals. Well, for the wine, it's about the same. You know, we know that he's going to, uh, he has the potential for aging, how good it will be in, in 50 years, uh, I tell you uh, in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, and after that, to conclude, uh, we have Saint Pierre, 2019. And How long is this one aged in barrels? Pardon me? How long is this in oh, barrels? The, the wine aged um, uh, about 12 months. So, uh, about aging in barrel, uh, we have, up, depending of, it's the same problem that the suit I was talking sooner. Uh, in the past, people were thinking that if the wine was not tannic enough, they use more wood. And it was the worst thing to do, because the wine was unbalanced. So if you have a percentage Imagine of tannin, you can use the same percentage of new wood, but not more or less. Then, uh, we have, generally speaking, 50% new wood for, for St. Pierre and 40% for Gloria. The other barrels are wine, one wine or two wine. So we have 50%, for example, new, 20% one year old, and 20% two years old. To, to, uh, to explain. And we realized that if the, in the 20% with two years old barrels, the wine oxidized correctly but dry a little because the wine, the wood was burned by alcohol. So 
we try to experiment now for about three years uh, to, to not to use anymore 25% of two years wood to replace it by um, uh, amphore, big, uh, how do you call that, amphore? Huh? Oh yes, the same thing. I can say it in Latin if you want. <laughs> so, and we realized that uh, by this way, uh, there is no oxidation, but we keep more fruit. So, now for the, we are thinking about it. We, we, use, we make the experience with five or six big amphores. We need 150. So before to buy it, we want to be sure. <laughs> At the Krubuk. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah we, we don't know. We are, we are not sure. Okay. Where, where is my bottle? Oh. I, I remember uh, when I was uh, chairman of the uh, football team from Bordeaux, uh, we have partnership. Uh, with a champagne company because we use a lot of champagne. We, we win so many uh, competitions that we need a lot of champagne. Uh, and I was discussing with the guy. I said, well, the Chardonnay, when do you harvest the Chardonnay? Uh, do you wait for good ripeness? Do you wait for, I say, well, forget it. In champagne, we are just interested by volume, Acidity, we don't care about sugar content, we don't care about maturity. Well, that it was 20 years ago. Now, I feel that the champagne today, especially Blanc de Blanc with Chardonnay, they are making a, slight, a, a slightly sparkling Burgundy. Because the, the, the wine, the grapes now are, are peak mature, uh, with more sugar content, more alcohol, uh, it's they're the more body. They are not as much interested as, uh, by acidity as they were in the past. So you have some champagne with very, very small bubbles, good uh, and good juice, good grapes. Yeah. Uh, Salon is one of the uh, first to do it, but there is many other ones now who are doing the same. And there is, you have great champagne and different from the champagne from the past. 